This is problem number seven from the H1-4 homework worksheet. We're going to solve this equation by first getting rid of the fractions. In order to do that, we need to figure out what that value we need to multiply by would be to get rid of our denominators. In this case, we have denominators of eight. Actually, I'm going to write them over here. We have eight, we have six, we have four, and we have three. This one may not be as easy to pick out the least common denominator just by looking at the numbers. So in order to help you see what to do when this happens, right, let's just take each of these and break it down to its prime factorization. Eight is the same thing as two times two times two. Six is the same thing as two times three. Four is the same thing as two times two. And three is basically just one times three or three. So our least common denominator is going to have to be able to be divisible by all the factors possible here. So when we look at this here, right, our 8 has three twos. So our least common denominator has to be divisible by 2 to the third power, 2 times 2 times 2. It has to be able to be divisible by three twos. Okay, so 6 already has a 2 in it there, but it also has a 3. Right, so since it's got a three, we have to have at least one three in there. Okay, so four has two twos, which was already covered, right? Because both of those twos are here. And then three, right? We've already talked about three there. So to get our least common denominator, we're gonna take, you know, these factors and multiply them together. Two times two times two is eight. Eight times three is 24. That's our least common denominator. Another way you can think about it here is, you just want to identify all the different factors amongst you know, our denominators, right? So we've got twos, we've got threes, and that's it. And you want to figure out what, how many times does two appear in each of them there, right? There's three of them there, there's one there, there's one there. I'm sorry, there's two here, right? You want to take the one that has the most. So since there's three twos here, that's why we put two to the third there. These ones each have just one three in there. Right, so we only need one three up here. And that's you know just another way to think about it. If you need help with this, let me know and I'll gladly help you out. So I'm gonna multiply both sides of this equation by 24. So I know 24 is divisible by eight. Eight goes into 24 three times and then three times that seven should be 21. So we have 21 X. We know 24 is divisible by 6, that would be 4, and we multiply it by the numerator, it would be 5, so we get minus 4 times 5 is 20. Over here, 24 times 3 fourths, well 24 is divisible by 4, 6 times, times 3 would be 18. And 24 divided by 3, again here, that would give us what, 8, 8 times 5 is 40. So we have plus 40x. And now it looks a lot easier to do, right? We're going to just subtract our 21x. So that's zeroed out there. And then I want to get my constant values to zero out. So I'm going to subtract 18. Be careful when you're doing negative 20 minus 18, because that's negative 38. And then, neg I'm sorry, positive 40 minus 21 ends up being, what, 19? So we are at the end here. 19 goes into 38 two times, but we got a negative two there. So x is equal to negative two. If you're somebody who needs to help see the check here, okay, so I'll do the check over here. Seven eighths times negative two minus five sixths equals three-fourths plus five-thirds times negative two. So this is going to give us here, what, negative 14 eighths minus five-sixths is equal to three-fourths. And then we're going to have, what, minus ten-thirds. And it's up to you how you wish to do this part here. You can take it and go ahead and do, multiply everything by 24 again. 
Um, or you can look to say, you know, get common denominators on each side or in, in the whole thing as well. Um, I think it's probably easier to just look at it like this, right? Between eight and six, we know they both go into 24. So if I multiply this by three over three, I would end up with negative uh, 42 over 24. If I multiply the six to make it a 24, I multiply it by four. So I multiply top and bottom by four. So minus 20 over 24. And when you do that there, that should be a negative 62 over 24. Okay, so if I'm gonna use 24 as my denominator there, I can go ahead and, and make this, uh, you know, my common denominator over here. If I multiply four times six and three times six, I'm gonna get 18 over 24. And if I multiply three times eight, I multiply the top by eight, I'm gonna have minus 80 over 24. And that gives us a negative 62 over 24 as well. So we know we're correct there. X equals negative 2. Um, I don't want you to get lost in the checks. You know, sometimes it's just easier to plug in on the calculator. But being that you've been on summer vacation for, you know, a couple months, it's probably good for you to practice doing some stuff with some numbers to help, you know, regain your strength with your number sense. All right. So. Uh, if you have questions about this at all, please reach out. Thanks for watching.